welcome guys in a new video on the team pushing the meta. Today we have the stream review from Bush Riot and they showcased us our last PR from the uh, Phantom Dragon Aeon set and we're very happy to announce that Luart is finally back with his old glory uh, where we can see a lot of old mechanics back and how he defended that into the new build. So um, for guys that don't know it, yes Luart was revealed today uh, with two triple wires and one double wear. Uh, that will be accompanying him with the new build and today I'm going to show you guys off the skills what it has the impact on the standard format and what it has for the impact on the premium format so yeah without further ado I will just showcase you guys so the first card we have is actually Drag Twisted Knees and a friend of my Chris and me already predicted that this will would be come back since uh, Drag Race at Leofall was all, uh, already reviewed and we thought um, that this is like the great or Leofall is like the great 2 counterpart of Luard and since we also have the great 1 counterpart that's with the sort of Drag Race of Nice uh, we thought that she had to come back for sure and it is a really good card to come back because she is a beast she has some very interesting mechanics and for her skill I will just show you guys up it um, Auto on Vanguard Circle, one place, look at the top 7 cards from your deck. I showcase you guys a Drag Heart to Lord or a Drag with a Leofall uh, from among them. Put them into your hand and shuffle your deck. So when you ride it, you can ensure your right target for the Great 2 turn and the Great 3 turn. You can uh, cannot add both cards to your hand. So that's um, a bummer, but just say it honestly. Uh, just making a plus 1 out of this is good enough in my opinion. And having the extra um, consistency is always nice to have. So, yeah, very good card we have. And she has a second skill out on Vega Circle. When placed with your card's ability, you call CB1 and your opponent chooses one of his hell guards and retires it. So, we still keep to the uh, Feast Thunder Shadow Sport where your opponent always chooses the card they want to retire. So, uh, just like the same with PBD um, and the Blessed Dark Support. You still, the opponent still has to choose a rare to retire. So if they don't have one or they cannot choose one, like a former daughter, um, or maybe even the the, rep, the rep from the Kikase, they cannot retire anything if they don't have anything else on board. So yeah, it's a good skill. I think it's a solid skill. It is very versatile since we have a lot of cards that can all got out uh, multiple. Uh, great ones from our deck and one of the yeah very own support cards is the drag was at leopold since um yeah this was just revealed a few days ago so it's not a real bummer but we have drag was at leopold with the skill that when plays you can counter blast one to go out any great one so with the drag was at knees you can already see that it makes a package so because you can call this to the field go out the knees knees use cb and get your advantage that way so really nice to see very nice um, mechanics and with the track list at Leofall you will get a lot of advantage early game since you just hit CB cost to call out the card, uh, get some advantage on your board early game, make some aggressive plays which then may make even more units onto the board so you have a uh, full board in an instance of manner. So that's really nice to see. And then um, yeah of course you can add this to your hand with me so you have your grade 2 right if you need to but if you don't already have the grade 2 right but you don't need to have the grade 3 right you can check the top 7 for the track hard rewards instead really nice and adds a overall consistency to the mechanic of course then for the second card we have uh, drag and Mugrasa and first of all a really really cool art uh, when you just look at the card um, it's it, it's just she's going all out with her entire magic uh, um, magic sorcery everything and I think it's even better than the great four Mofes because what we had with the art rise of Mofes it was all, um, always really intense or really dark and everything but what we had with the old Mofes it was quite dark um, but it was still a really cool art and uh, with the new Mofes they went very overboard with the extensive magic she used so you can't really see the unit itself uh, that good but with this you have a nice combination of the two with a lot of lining um, a lot of 
Crowley uh, texture as ma um, magic, of course, uh, but you still see the unit uh, in front of it. So that's really nice. And for the skill, uh, she has a very, very in depth skill because on Weirdo Circle or in the deck, actually, uh, if you have Fangor with the Ward and Scar name, she gets grade minus one. So, what this is good if is because if you want to call it play one you can also choose this but you need to do it on the quick few turn because um you need a reward finger so you cannot uh, use neophon in the quick two turn to call out a mortessa and with that um <laughs> you set up your um, board already but still solid skill but what makes this really good is the second part is uh, at the end of the battle is attack if you have four more raiders with the original grade being one so uh, Mopesa doesn't count herself, mind you, uh, because it's not original grade. Um, you can count her as one, retire her, so I call out the grade one from your drop zone. So she does almost the same as the old Mopesa in the sense that you can extend your attacks with, with calling one grade one. Um, but the difference is, is that this one retires herself, but you can go out any great one from your drop zone, but instead of your deck. Um, also, a really big difference from the old Mopesa is, is that the old Mopesa was a great one in your drop zone, and this is in the rear guard circle and on your deck. So, just the direct opposite of it. So, for the current deck, it doesn't really make a big difference, um, but still, um, if you would have the uh, opportunity to have this being great one here drops and that will be really insane uh, will make the card life PR worthy in my opinion but for now it's just a really solid um, rare card or, or a triple rare um, that is played I think for the not for as long as the ward is viable um, the second skill is just you can call it any great one um, and as you can see with the great one uh, or with how the ward uh, turns out you can make really good use of it but for premium it's also really nice because what we have in premium if you um okay let, let's just start slowly so the current format in premium is really aggressive in my opinion you have a lot of counter blasts to spare and this card makes a really big use of that because if you go into your great three turn uh, first um you go with reward you can call out this and just go multi attacking right from the get-go and that is really nice because the current reward doesn't have a really big great three turn play uh, since you are playing the old reward the track fall mostly and with that uh, with this you have a switch route so you can use your extended uh, extended counter blast you have left uh, to make some aggressive turns with that so that's really now for the premium side we'll talk uh, more about premium that we have to showcase all your car all the cards uh, of course, um, to, to talk about it. So, Track Hard Luar, the big VR of the set. And when I saw his skill, it was, I was fairly happy with it, but I was always, always thinking, uh, also thinking that it's, it, it just gears 2.0. But <laughs> let's, um, I will give you that opinion for inside. So, his skill is, I'll, I'll act finger circle. Um, once per turn, cost retire two great one way cards, small cards, choose one of your opponents, clear cards, and retires it. This is really important. So you can sack off like two domains that has already uh, almost pre value, uh, draw one card, and retire one of your opponent's share cards. But this one lets you choose the opponent's share card instead of the opponent choosing it. So you have more control over it. Um, it's just retire two domains to make a plus two. One for the retire, one of the draw. So, already a nice value but the power of this card lies in his second skill so also an act finger circle one per turn uh, this ability cost is reduced by counting as one to each great one in your drop zone so remember if you use this first skill we already have with two great ones into our uh, drop zone so with that um, the skill is already used under the counting as one but yeah um, then you can return two normal units from your drop zone to your deck, search your deck up to one track by power, blue art, guide it to stand, shuffle your deck, and at the end of this turn, guide the track hard reward from your soldier's rest. So you get actually two markers in one single turn because you have the track hard that you're running per turn, then you ride back at the end of the turn for track hard reward, 
that makes the package of all the solida. Um, and for the plus, it depends on what track driver does, but we already know what track driver does. And I will just not wait any longer to show you guys that. So this is track driver Luard, also a really sick, uh, sick art, and his skill is immensely powerful. So during your turn, this unit will power plus five hit of each of your grade one rear So if you have five grade one rear guards, it's actually plus 25 hit power for free. Nothing else, nothing more. If you have two more grade one, uh, grade three cards in your soul, this original critical of all of your grade one characters becomes two. So um, first of all, when you just look at the card, we see, oh, it has a fourth marker. And when I looked at it and I saw that it has a fourth marker, I was a little bit irritating because why the fuck does Gears not have the fourth marker? Sorry for my language, but what does it mean? Why? Okay, sorry. Back to <laughs> back to shadows. <laughs> so because it has a fourth marker, you can have three markers in one single turn. One from the right, one at the end of the turn because of track card skill, and one of track drive because we super rewarded from the deck to uh, the Vanguard Circle. So really nice makes gives it already gives two fourth markers for the first attacking turn of the grade two turn, and with that we have really far more pressure because if we talk back about Mufasa, it's superior cut out the grade one, and it, because we superior cut the grade one, most of the grade ones in your current deck don't have a lot of power except for the grade five that gives us in K, for example, we can't another. But for most of the let, let's say career theoretically. We have a 10k grade 1 unit with two fourth markers already. That's 30k. That makes a big difference. That, that could a 25k shield for your opponent if they're on like 10k base. So it brings up a lot of aggressiveness. Um, but for this card, it will be more insane if the original crit will be become two um, uh, on the first grade turn. But unfortunately, we cannot do that uh, at this point of time because we can't force. A great three into our soul. Yeah, and uh, what's really powerful is um, it can be any great three. So if we look back at uh, at the PBL right chain or the PBD right chain, so we have the great one triple rare, the great two uh, great one five uh, k unit, and with that we have fewer great one slots in the drop zone for the track hard skill. We spare right the PB. D earlier, so when our opponent is on grade 1, we already on PBD potentially, and with that we have a grade 3, or we write on the grade 3, then we write track hard new art over again, and with that we have one grade 3 in the soul, then use track hard skill and have the track hard new art also in the soul. So with that we already have the potential crit life uh, from the get go when we reach our second grade 3 turn, which is um, for opponent when they are on grade 2 if we use the PBD skill. So we um, we are going to test of course how that is going to perform but uh, for me I think it's really solid to play with. But Luart or Drag Drive Luart it has a second skill that is when placed count of less 1 search your deck for error up to the number of cards in your soul with Luart plus 1. Um, so. When play, sorry, I will just talk about it again. When played, CB1, search your deck for up to the number of cards in your soul with the ward and the card name, plus one, uh, grade one cards, call them to the record shop and shop your deck. So, yeah, this is good, this guy. <laughs> so, what we can do is just count to plus one, go to the mid, to grade one. And that's really important. So, what we for, um, can do is call on like Nightmare Painter that can put the card from the drop zone to the soul so we get the soul cards out of it. And call also out to like something like a Karen. So uh, that soul blesses out the card we soul charge and then get the counter bless we found it. So with that, we have a lot of options. We also have uh, multiple skills like Javelin, uh, Blessed Javelin, we can call it to make an extra plus out of it. We can call out multiple units um, we want. And of course, we have a lot of packets. Uh, and with this, we can dig in a lot. So for the track hard first skill we get a plus out of it to sacro great ones and with it with this skill we refuel it so it uh, makes a good solid um, good solid package 
For premium, however, this is also a really nice skill because you can run, for, exa uh, for example, the 4 uh, track hard reward and the 4 track drive reward. And because this is a great thing, you can also play it as your main great three right rider because it has an on play skill, um, does still have a uh, good use out of it, and it has the ward in the card end, which is the most important thing because now with the dev we can use the old Belials, we can use the dark gas and everything, and go rampage in, um, yeah, go rampage in premium. Uh, unfortunately, because the critical of all the great one readers becomes two. Uh, we have to play Force 1 because Force 2 also changes the original crit of the units to, uh, to become 2, so it doesn't stack in that way. So we are focused on playing Force 1, just like with PBO. So I'm really excited to see how this is going to plan out. Um, in premium, this is really sick if you use track hard, um, go for the great feature, uh, pressure opponent with a bit of multi attacking, a bit of everything. And then go into a stripe and already have three markers to play with. So, uh, say for example, we have Gapio with two markers and the other rear guard serve with one marker. More faster skill plus 15k to the front row, and that's that's bomb my stuff. That's so much power for your opponent to handle, and I think that will not survive most of the time. And with the stand build we are doing right now, it will be even more detrimental for your opponent. So. For me, I'm really stoked for this. I hope um, it will be just as, a, as I and Chris planned out to be. We're going to, of course, uh, print out the proxies and play with those. And I'm very, very hyped for this set. I want this set to be out right now, but unfortunately, we still have to wait like two months now because it will be released on October the 30th. Unfortunately, but it's worth every single uh, second of it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, smash the thumbs like up if you like this sort of video. Uh, I'm not doing that much of it, um, but um, there will be coming out two new deck profiles from the Gear Chronicle, one standard, and of course one premium. And I hope you will guys will check that also out. So, yeah, have a nice day and see you next time. Goodbye.